this video goes into more detail on the subject of mutation. Now, mutation in an evolutionary algorithm will always depend on the representation of your candidate solutions. There are many common representations in use, for example, bit strings, an example being the following. Bit strings are common in evolutionary computation because all data in a computer is ultimately just zeros and ones. You can use bit strings to represent just about anything. Now, if you are mutating bit strings, it is common to simply flip a bit as a mutation. In this bit string, if this bit were mutated with a bit flip, it would simply change it from a 0 to a 1 to get the following. Now, whether or not a bit is flipped depends on the mutation rate. However, it also depends on what this rate signifies. You could define the mutation rate as the chance of a mutation occurring. For example, let's say we had a 50% mutation rate, meaning that there's a 50% random chance that one randomly chosen bit will be flipped. However, it is also common to have a global mutation rate that is smaller, for example, 5%, meaning that for every individual bit in the bit string, there's a 5% chance that that bit will be flipped. Another common representation is arrays of floating point numbers. This is also known as a real value representation. So an example of such a representation would be the following. Such a representation is useful because you can usually solve a problem by specifying a sequence of parameter values. Typically, each number will have some range that is restricted to, although another option is to simply confine all numbers to a common range, for example, negative 1 to 1, and then map those results to the target range appropriate for your problem. In this representation, we have to consider whether or not we are mutating a single number or if we have a global mutation rate for each number, just as with the bit strings. However, once we have chosen a number to modify via mutation, how do we do it? If we choose this number, we will typically modify it with something called Gaussian perturbation. A Gaussian probability distribution is also known as a normal distribution. It looks like this. The way to interpret this is the following. Values along this x-axis are possible numbers you could generate. The height of this curve at that position is the likelihood of getting that particular number if you randomly generate a new value. So values near the average are more likely to occur, whereas values far from the average in either direction are less likely to occur. The thickness of this bulge is measured by something known as standard deviation. A Gaussian distribution is nice because it is completely defined by its average and its standard deviation, but you can create different Gaussians by changing these two values. So if we want to mutate this number, we typically want a value which is more likely to be close to this value than to be far from it. The reason for this is that as evolution progresses, we want to get closer and closer to the best values. Presumably, because selection favors good individuals, we want to search the region near where we already are more than areas that are farther away. So what we do is we make this value be the average of a Gaussian. We also need to set the standard deviation, and this can be set based on the problem you are solving, although a particular method known as an evolution strategy will adapt 
this value to best suit the needs of the search process. This distribution means that a value near 17.62, such as 19.53, is more likely to be the result of mutating that than a value such as 3.65. Simply using Gaussian perturbation, many complex structures can be evolved. For example, let's say I want to evolve a neural network with the following topology. Two outputs, four hidden neurons, and three inputs. Now, assuming this network is fully connected, we would have the following links. That is two times four links between these two layers plus four times three links between these two layers for a total of 20 links, meaning 20 floating point numbers are needed. Therefore, one way to evolve a network like this is to simply evolve an array of 20 floating point numbers and map each of those numbers to a particular link in this network. This can actually be successfully accomplished using a strategy known as CNAES. This stands for Covariance Matrix Adaptation Evolution Strategy. Now the details of this algorithm are somewhat complex, but it does work well. However, searching in such a large space is in general fairly difficult. And we'll find that there are other ways to search in interesting spaces without resorting to arrays of numbers or bit strings.